Hello guys and welcome to our brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the third part four episode number five and six reaction. Okay, the previous two episodes we had um a, a really good ep episode three was really good. I enjoyed it so much because we actually confront um the M16 guy. I think his, his name was Nix and he is a pretty big threat and uh, like you know we actually had to struggle to like you know not struggle but actually yeah struggle and like you know we had to play a gamble lupin had to play a gamble to win against him he's like this type of a uh, i don't know superhuman being or something he she can he can like has like you know like the the, the power of like a you know, sonar power or whatever like the the what was it called uh, i forgot the name of the the one which bats use you know where he, he can like you know get to see like using like supersonic uh like you know, like feeling the vibration he can like you know get the blueprint of the whole place or something that kind of thing and that was not his only uh like you know power he says like he has multiple powers and uh, it's crazy like i don't know how he is like this like you know probably we will have an explanation in the future i'm guessing it'll be probably something like oh he's like uh, I don't know like some kind of experimental like you know like he was experimented upon or something and it I'm, I'm i think it is going to go in that direction or something because yeah like you know, i've never seen rupan kind of like you know, go into the supernatural stuff like they usually try to explain it using these type of scientific like you know things but we'll see we'll have to wait for that time will tell what happens but yeah um we like you know have to fight against him and rupan take up took a big gamble and it was successful that's how he and um, Go uh, Jigen were able to survive that whole thing otherwise it would have been a problem mm. so yeah and uh, obviously like you know we use also use kind of used Rebecca's help as well um, Re Rebecca did not know that knew that uh, he was being she was being used <laughs> but that was also part of Rupan's gamble that was a good episode episode number four was um, an episode which was focused on uh, Jigen and Jigen like you know goes to like a town where there's like a place where it's been having problems with the local mafia boss you know the mafia boss wants money protection money he makes people the living dead like you know almost kills them but you know doesn't kill them with that type of a sadistic like you know crap and uh, the doctor tries to save that person and that like, you know, the, the whole mess and uh, Jigen came in Jigen taught him a huge lesson and, uh, you know like not to mess with uh <laughs> not to mess with people uh, who are obviously a lot more skilled than him you know? like and always respect your elders <laughs> and yeah that's how it ended it was a, it was a good episode so let's see what these two episodes brings episode number five of rupan the third part four let's start i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Okay. Tony Tony Belacastro. Oh. Oh, that's his dad, okay. Wait a minute, is that Fujiko? What the? What's, what's she doing here? Yo, what? Um... What? What is happening? I think this is a part of the show, isn't it? Yeah, this is definitely part of the show. I don't know. What? This is a weird way it started. What's happening? Uh, 
Um, okay. Started in a weird way. Hmm. Okay. Magician's left hand. Wait, what did he say? Left hand. What is that? What? When did they even... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh lord. Uh uh. E Oh my god, he's not good. What? Like, I understand that, but you know, you know, um, wait, he's a magician. Oh no, oh, he's assistant to the magician. Okay. Yeah. What, 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 what? All right. Great, this guy is. <laughs> Look at Jigen's. <laughs> Jigen's face. Oh. Okay. I wonder what, why she, okay, it's definitely something to do with the ringmaster, like, like, you know, like, probably she infiltrated this, okay, I'll talk about it. I'll Uh, wow. Who is this? <laughs> Wait, is he eating? Yo! Or is that a she? No, it's a... Rick recipe. Oh. There you go. Oh, in his head. Mm. But why would she want these recipes? Ah, oh my god, the sun is Okay.
Hmm. But yeah, exactly. And obviously because of jealousy as well, I think. Hmm. Okay. Wow, this is re these recipes are a pretty big deal. I can see that. Ah! Wait, what the? Ah, the tiger is loving it. <laughs> Chicken. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. I don't think so. Oh, maybe he messed up or something. Oh, he messed up. So it, did it really like... Ah, uh, like that was an accident. Yeah. He's actually covering for him. Hmm. I don't know if I should believe that. I don't know. What? Why? What the hell? What's up with these people? They're all just... <laughs> Calm down. Yep. Hmm. Oh, it was maybe it was something. Oh. Oh. So. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this is pretty obvious, like... Like, okay. Like, people never told you this because they... They didn't want... Wealth, fame, or love. Well, okay. Well, that's good, like... So, hmm. Well, I can <laughs> Yeah, okay.
what hmm what the wait He didn't say it. Oh wow, so yeah, these people are... Oh boy. Damn, these people don't even know what Fujiko is capable of. I'm pretty sure also get a weakness. So he wrote the magic and uh, escape trick. Not, oh boy. Yeah, there you go. I was just saying, like, the person who you're confining. Oh god. Okay, this is a problem. Now this becomes a problem. Like, I was not concerned about Fujiko, but yeah, this guy. Oh, okay. Well, first time, first time. Ah. <sighs> I doubt that as well. She even plans to backstab the, 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 the circus master, the ringmaster. Wait, what? Oh my God. Yo, so he. You, this guy's crazy. So he tried to, oh my god. Like, I can see that he, like, the ringmaster was trying to kill him. Like, I guess that's why, but. Uh. I'm pretty sure Fujiko realizes what she's doing okay so that was the scene there you go so that was a dummy or something i don't know what was that Well, yeah, this is no surprise. Why is Rupan getting so surprised? Like, I'm pretty sure she also, he also. What the? Wow, this guy. Oh my God. I don't like this guy. Like, what? Oh, really? Oh, then that changes things. Oh. <coughs> oh, <coughs> okay, okay, okay. No, 
No, wait. <coughs> what? There you go, jealousy. And that's why you kill your father? Are you... Maybe he... All right, stop this. Yeah, to the front. Oh my God, this guy is going to wait. What the? Oh, they didn't know about it. Ah, it's to deceive. Yeah. So he kept his right hand for the right thing forever. <coughs> Yeah, where's the punchline? Okay, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the punchline. Come on. Wait, so... Great. Great. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> My money. Yeah. Oh god. Both in a sense. No, you you know what? I'll say he she saved him. Like it started with Okay, I'll talk about this later. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. uh, as I said, <laughs> that's how she should be. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, so this was a Fujiko centric episode. Now, uh, like, here's the thing. <laughs> like,
Like, I feel like the only character in this show who I doubt the author himself knows what, like, this is the thing. Okay, that's the end. Now, you know what? I feel like, you know, the author himself probably doesn't even know what type of a person Fujiko is. Like, that's the level of Fujiko's, <coughs> what can I say? Like, you know, like, her, her character, it's like that. I feel like that's, like, another case here. Because Fujiko, like, I've seen, like, in, in, this, in this show, every character, you know, like, somehow you are able to understand how they are. Like, you know, uh, Rupan, I, uh, like, you know, if you rank it like that, Rupan is probably the person who is a little bit more complicated to understand <coughs> than all the other characters. But Fujiko is, like, the top. You know, like, you cannot understand what this girl is thinking. Like, like it, it's weird in a, in a way. And, uh, like, I feel like Rupan is like, you know, just after her. But in a, in a way, you can also kind of understand what Rupan's ideals are. If you think about it. Like, <coughs> <coughs> like Rupan can... Just a sec. Rupan, he... Whatever he does and like you know how how many tricks he plays, there are a few things which we can say that Rupan never breaks. Uh, for example, like you know, like stuff which are things which are very serious. Actually, like you know, something that probably would affect the world as a whole. Like you know, like I remember like that one episode where he did not actually try to go in in the uh, like you know the the weapons trade thing where like you know, the nuclear weapons trade where. He, he he backed off because that was actually going to affect the world these type of huge scale things he ne never goes like you know, that's against his moral as far as i can realize and like you know, to an extent we can get to see how much loyal he is all that stuff um jigen and goemon are the easiest to understand jigen goemon and zenigata these three are the easiest people to understand they are very transparent you know like we can see uh, jigen and goemon are very very loyal to rupan and at a certain extent, you can actually understand what their personality is and you can predict what they're going to do at certain situations. Zenigata is obviously very transparent. You, you know what he's trying to sell. Like, you know, he, like, you know, he, he, just, he just wants to catch Rupan. That's just it. So out of all these characters, Rupan is somewhat complicated. Fujiko, on the other hand, I don't know what she's thinking. Like, you know, this, this is one girl who is just, just so random. And uh, I feel like that actually brings out her charm here. Like, in the end, where Rupan says that, yeah, that's what makes you you, never change, something like that, he says. I think that's the best description of Fujiko. Now, I've seen, like, and I, I'm not seen, but I feel like a lot of people actually don't like Fujiko. <laughs> like, I don't blame them, because if you look at her in a very, like, you know, like, what can I say, like, in a very forward way, you know, like, in a very black and white sense, you'll obviously say like oh she's bad she's like you know she, she's one of the worst guys i've seen i like i've seen a few people actually even say that oh i hate fujiko so much but that's because they are looking at this whole thing in a black and white sense you know like the world is not as easy as like, you, know, you, you should not look at everything in uh like you know, in each and every extremities fujiko is in in the middle of it you know she she's like like a like a like a what can I say like you know like a, an unpredictable type of person. Sometimes we see how like you know like what her like you know uh, like you know her kind part. Sometimes we actually see her um, nasty part, and uh, like Fujiko is a mixture of that. And I feel like that probably makes her such a good character in Rupan. Like for example. I think this is another episode where we kind of get to see that she I'm pretty sure she started this whole thing with the intention of getting her job done and uh, yeah getting out of here as soon as possible but by the middle or by the like you know like yeah middle she changed her mind a little bit she realized she thought that oh I need to like you know change this 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 guy like you know, he he probably has a lot of hidden talent and uh, he's just wasting his time just rotting away and i should do something that's going to kind of help him out get his confidence back now all, all like you no know, she she could have easily taken him here and uh, you know like just as she said her actual goal was to bring him to this like you know this company or this thing and uh, like you know 
make him like you know like not sell him like i i won't say like sell him but uh you know like bring him here and actually make him sign a contract with that lady that was her goal and you know for that she's going to get her money so she could have easily done that but not only that she even gave him a push to actually do something and become more proactive in his like you know craft but <clears throat> The way she did that was, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would not like it. Like, you know, like actually playing, like, you know, what can I say? Playing him and his feelings for doing that. So, <laughs> like, this is a, like a kind of an interesting episode. Like, what she did was very good, but by the end of it, she does end up breaking this guy's heart. And uh, I guess he will have to learn at least that in a hard way. But you know what? I feel like deep, uh, like you know, I feel like way in the future, um, this guy when he'll become more famous or will be able to be more, like you know, confident in his thing, will become a very good magician. He'll probably, like you know, recall this time and he'll be like, ah, oh, I was such a fool. But yeah, she did end up helping me out and setting me straight in the correct direction. Gave me that push that nobody gave me when I needed it so i'm sure like you know he he'll think of it in this way in way in the future so in the end she did help him out in such a big way so this episode starts with this guy you know like talking like you know like this guy getting injured it started in a very weird way like you know we start started from the middle of the the whole thing so we get to see the little, the backstory, what happened before, where this guy starts singing praise of Fujiko, while Rupan and Gohem, uh, Jigen are like, ha 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 ha, you fool, you fell for that old trick in the book. She always does that. And he's like, oh, wh why would she do that? Like, you know, like if, if she really wanted to trick me, you know, like she wouldn't act that way, you know, uh, like, you know, in, in that manner, like she, she actually gave me good advice. And, uh, now one thing i feel like that th there's an interesting thing that actually happens here where is it where he talks about uh the the past not past but he, he recollects what happened you know that that scene in the uh the sunflower field okay here it is where is it um Okay. When Fujiko says that, have you done something to revive the magic? He's like, no, I'm, I'm on the process of doing that. And Fujiko is like, then you might as well give up on ever reviving his magic. There's no reward without risk, no wealth or fame or love. Now, <laughs> interesting, like, you know, choice of words here. He says there's no reward without risk yeah this is definitely fujiko's motto what she's saying here is that no wealth or fame or love for this guy you know like i guess wealth fame is something that he not him he, he didn't want but that was like the buy the, the product you know of him actually being proactive. if he becomes proactive he can get them all but instead of taking that chance or that risk he was actually just sitting around thinking like oh one day i will be able to do this but now i i won't because i'm not ready and he would keep waiting like this forever and for fujiko i feel like this was very very um uncomfortable no i'm not uncomfortable like what can i say um this was a very like, you know, this is a situation that Fujiko herself could not accept because she's a person who takes risk left and right. She, she can even risk her own life for money. That's what Fujiko is. And seeing someone who has, has this type of talent but just r wasting it by just letting it rot and just not doing anything, not taking that risk, um, I, felt, I feel like she probably talked about, like, you know, like here, where she kind of encourages him. There were multiple things kind of playing here. First of all, 
she had that one goal of like you know making him realize his talent and making him proactive uh, you know like that was the main thing what she wanted to do so that she could actually bring him and make him uh, like you know like sign a contract with one of those uh, companies so that she can get her money that was like one of her goal um another one as i said like you know fujiko herself being that type of a person who just takes risks left and right she probably was not able to accept the situation where this guy was just letting his talent go to waste by not taking any risks and uh, yeah like and i feel like these two were like the main uh, reasons why she kind of did that and uh, she genuinely like you know helped him out to like you know helped him to grow and uh, like i feel like in it it started in a very professional way but in the end by the end of it she really did want him to succeed in his own way and that's why in the end when rupan is like oh was that like you know what, what what was all of this was this an actual thing or like you know did you really want to help him out or this was all for the money and she's like what do you prefer <laughs> so <laughs> yeah anyways uh, so yeah that was this whole story you know like fujiko like you know, tries to at first we can see this guy is so much like you know just just smitten with fujiko he's like oh fujiko would never do that he she encouraged me this and that and she starts he starts like you know narrating the whole story um the story was that the magician the the father of this guy the 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 the, the magician then then what was his name i forgot the ringmaster yeah his father was someone who was probably like you know very, very affectionate towards luca and saw something in him you know his talent his you know, talent hidden in him so he said something like oh like you know i'm going to you know like you know give you my secret you know the secret recipe or whatever now seeing that the son got jealous and uh, killed and tried to frame him kill the dad and try to frame him frame luca so this is how the whole thing went luca however thought that it was his fault because he made some mistake or something that's why like you know the 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 ringmaster's dad died and that's the reason why whenever this type of a situation like you know people talked about this he got very uncomfortable and scared because he thought he kept thinking that it was his fault because for for his death now one thing i i need to talk about here um this whole situation if you see uh, look at this situation obviously the the kind of the biggest the one who is the most at fault here is definitely the ringmaster because he actually killed his dad like you know that's in no way that is acceptable and uh, he definitely needs the kind of proper judgment but I don't know there's another thing that I feel like that I should talk about here is that the dad I don't know what type of relationship the dad and the son had but I don't know I I feel like I've seen this in multiple animes where the dad suddenly tries to like you know like like you know just forgets about his son or daughter and like you know tries to help out someone else and the son and the actual son and daughter gets jealous of that whole situation like i remember um oh a biggest like one of the biggest example of this is sangatsu no lion or march comes in like a lion march comes in like a lion is a show which i am so fond of it is on my top 10 anime my my most top 10 loved anime it's like in in the second place like you know this is my second most uh favorite anime is march comes in like a lion similar situation like that that is also happening there where the dad doesn't actually pay more attention to his actual daughter and son but paid attention to the main protagonist who he adopted just because he's good at shogi like this type of a situation like i feel like the in these type of situations the dad is at equal fault here like nobody like thinks about it in that like what type of a like you know like just because someone has better talent you just abandon your son and your daughter like what type of a thing is that like 
I don't understand this thing. Like, he could have, I don't know, like, you know, like, he could have, like, this is a complicated thing, you know, like, I'm not saying that, yeah, he, he didn't, like, you know, that this guy, this ringmaster's dad, he didn't give the recipe to the son, that's why, where he's wrong, I'm, I'm not saying that, like, obviously, the, the, the other guy is talented, he, that's why he gave that to him, but I feel like him not actually talking about the situation to his son was what make, made this a big problem, like, look at, like, think of it in this way, if he actually made a decision of giving his secrets to Luca, he could have went to his son, you know, and he could have said that, you see, son, like, this is the thing here, you know, like, like, like how can I even explain this situation, like, what can he say that, oh, you, you are not talented enough, that's why I'm giving this to Luca. I don't know. I don't know how you like can actually approach this situation. It's a complicated situation, you know. But at least he could have went and talked to his son and actually like you know, like had a conversation with him before before he actually gave the uh the secrets to to Luca. Like I feel like if this conversation happened, like obviously his son would have said something there. Maybe his son would have said something like Oh, like, you know, like, please, dad, give me, like, you know, a little bit more chance. I'll try my best. And then you can, something like this. The conversation could have easily gone in this way. And that, that could have been like, all right, fine. I'll give you a few more uh, months. You know? And then when it's the time has, like, you know, when, when the time will come to give my secrets, the recipes, I'll decide in the end who to give it based on your talent and everything. But I, I feel like it could have gone a lot more smoother if he actually talked with his son. I doubt he talked with him. I doubt he did that. I think he just went on and gave the secrets to um, Luca. And that's why the, the son was like, why did this happen? Like, now, one thing we need to understand here is like the anger that the son felt here is in some extent justified because he's his dad, you know, like there is a little bit of expectation that a son should have towards his parents. And if your parents just like, you know, just don't like you know like talk to you and just give the like you know he, he just gave the secret to him i'm pretty sure everyone like you know, all the like you know the, the, whoever children there is they will feel betrayed at a certain extent and this guy this ringmaster took it a little bit too far that's the wrong that he did he did he took this a little bit too far he could have just been like oh like you know i don't care i'm leaving and just left the place that's one thing he could have done or maybe he could have said something like um i don't know something like you know like maybe we had a like you know had a quarrel with him maybe shouted at him maybe maybe like you know like you know, vented his frustrations on his dad and that could have been it you know but he took this a little bit too far and just ended up killing his dad like that's wrong that's definitely wrong but still like you know i feel like the betrayal that he felt was definitely huge like like I can, I like, I, know, I, I feel like I, I'm actually talking, like, you know, about this whole situation a bit too much. But I feel like this, this is one thing that we should actually understand: that the children also have some expectations of their parents, and the thing that the dad did here would probably be like a huge shock to the child, and he, or she would feel betrayed, and that's the same thing that happened here. So I feel like the whole situation. The dad was at fault at the beginning for not having this conversation with his son. And after that, the son took this way too far by just killing him. So everyone at some extent is at fault here. And uh, like, you know, this is just what I wanted to talk about. Because I feel like whenever anyone will look at this episode, they'll always look at the negative of like, you know, like the, the whole situation. They'll always say like, oh, the, um, the ringmaster is the one at bad here. Which is definitely correct. I'm not saying that no, he was all like you know he was what he did was justified. Definitely no, he killed someone. That's not justified. But what I'm trying to say here is the trigger is the main problem here. How this happened, and the way this happened, there is a little bit of a fault that the dad also had. I don't know. I I, I just feel feel like you know like this is something I I just wanted to talk about. Because I wanted to just tell, like, you know, talk about the other side of the story. We will always, like, we will always talk about what happened here. That the, the son killed his dad. That's wrong. That's everyone. What that's what everyone will talk about. But I feel like we should also look at the other part of the story here. 
So yeah, that's just what I wanted to say, you know, like because I've seen the other, like you know, as I was talking about Sangha Suno Lion, a March comes in like a lion. A similar thing happened here, like a similar thing which happens here happens over there. It's like obviously the <laughs> they do not kill the dad. That doesn't happen. But still, there is a situation like this, and like you know, even though the the actual daughter of that guy, I'm not spoiling. I'm trying not to spoil anything of the guy, you know. The actual daughter, the blood related daughter, even though she was a nasty person, you know, I felt sad for her sometimes because it really showed how she was just so disappointed, betrayed, felt betrayed by her dad as to as she just, as, and because his da her dad gave all the attention to the adopted child just because she, he was better at shogi than them, you know. That's why she felt so disappointed, so betrayed, and that's what made him made her go in the wrong direction. And he be, she became a nasty person. Like I love this show. Like I love Sangha Sun Alliance so much. Just just because of this, so many things like this, which actually makes you think of a situation. And uh, this whole episode kind of reminded me of that situation so much. And that's why I wanted to talk about. Um, anyways, um, enough about that. I'm I, I talked about that way too much. Anyways, and then uh, like, you know the whole thing happens and uh, like you know like um he he recalls his story the back the, the whole recollection how fujiko met him how she gave him the push how he started trying to change after that and how he wanted to let fujiko know the first person like you know, that is fujiko let her know about the magic trick but this guy this this ringmaster he ends up taking things a bit too far he tries to you know, take Fujiko hostage, and that's when you know, like, oh, one thing I understand now. I didn't understand at that moment. You know, like when Fujiko was upside down, uh, he wrote the recipe and gave it to him, the ringmaster. That's when there was a situation where Fujiko kind of changes her expression. You know, and that's when after that she kind of cuts the rope and falls down. She re she realized that was a like you know like that was like a false uh you know like recipe and because he gave it with his right left hand and that's why she, i think fujiko made that decision over there that all right let me like you know actually get out of this situation and then let me yeah let me kind of betray luca in in a sense and work with this magician that's how luca would realize that oh fujiko is in trouble because that's a, not the actual recipe, that's the recipe for death. And he'll actually come and try to save him, uh, hey, save her. And like, you know, that will make her, him more, you know, like proactive in a sense. And I think that that's when she realized that and that's why she planned. And that's why after that, you know, after he got hit, um, he, she decided to work with the ringmaster just so that, you know, this whole thing can start happening. You know, he, he's going to realize that the, the, the death trap, Fujiko is going to fall for it. He's going to become more proactive and try to go save her. And this is how everything's going to play out. That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely when Fujiko made that plan. Anyways, um, so yeah, um, he, he gets hit, you know, he falls down. And then Rupan shows them the television and sees what's happening. At first, he feels betrayed, but then he realizes that what he actually gave the magician was the like you know like a bad recipe like a recipe for death so he he quickly goes and tries to save fujiko but then he's everyone sees that fujiko is okay obviously fujiko will be fine this fujiko we are talking about and then everything comes out where he confronts the magician about you know like the the death of the ringmaster and uh, yeah at first, I was really kind of skeptical, like because I did not realize that the this ringmaster was actually the person who was at fault here for the dad's death. That's why I was like, "What is he even doing? Why is he taking a knife and threatening him? Like, what's happening?" I was thinking, like you know, like I was thinking, like Luca was taking this too far. But then when I realized that, oh, he's the one who actually killed his dad, I'm like, "All right, so I can understand the like you know rage that Luca is feeling. I don't blame him." so obviously he confronts him and here we can see like you know that like this part like this is the thing i was talking about 
he says that father said father said that he was leaving the circus to you and not me he said he'll give me money and to find another career and just left now i was just saying they could have talked about this he did technically talk about this to him but this is not how you do it you know like like this is what i was saying like you know this this definitely felt like a betrayal to him at least and i feel like what the dad did here was equally bad like you know like but obviously like if this ended over here and if he went away with his things I would have probably say that yeah the dad was at fault but he took this too way too far and just tried and, and not tried but actually ended up killing his dad which is definitely wrong so that's why he's the bigger villain here now but I don't know I I feel like the dad was at fault at certain extent as well like why why would you do that to your own son like Imagine what the son will feel. Imagine in his shoes what you will feel if your dad suddenly comes in front of you. And your dad is like, "Oh, you know what? You're 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 talentless. So here you go, some money. Like you know, like I'm going to give my all. Uh, like you know, like everything to. Uh, like you know, to to the to Luca. And uh, you 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 take money and you do go and do something else. Like imagine how that would feel, especially for a person that is the child." who's actually trying his best to do what his dad is doing like it's like a like it's like a what can i say like a slap in your cheek like she he just comes and completely denies like i don't know i don't know what to say but i feel like this in itself is something that is i i i i'm really not happy about this the way the dad uh, try to like you know like talk like you know talk you made the situation like you know and how the uh, anyways enough about that all right and uh, that was that and obviously luca gets mad luca's like is that's why you killed him like is that like you know is that what you did and and, and not only you killed him you tried to blame me as well like obviously luca is the biggest victim here like the biggest victim is luca here because he just got stuck in in the middle of these two parent and child who are just both of them are fools both the parent and the child is a fool the the parent is the the like you know like the lesser fool and the child is the bigger fool here like and both are equally at wrong here and the child being the one at the bigger wrong so he he just got stuck in this mess and like you know these two just involved him in in their own like you know problems so he's the biggest victim here. So obviously he's like, and 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 that's why you decided to kill your dad and like you know just uh, like you know blame the uh, blame me, and he he just took a knife and tried to kill him, but Fujiko stopped him. Now at the same time, I feel like in Luca's mind, obviously the ringmaster is like a very a re very respected individual because he's the one who gave him everything, you know, like he gave him the, and that's why I think as well, like you know when he deceived. The ringmaster he used his left hand i feel like he 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 kept his right hand for that one day when he'll be able to reach that like you know that level and uh, not to sully the right hand he used his left hand to hand over the wrong recipe which in itself shows how much respect he has for the father like like yeah this is a weird like you know thing like the dad and the <laughs> son they were at odds here the dad loved luca and the son hated luca because his dad loved luca and uh, like this this is the whole situation it's like a weird thing you know and uh, yeah and thank god fujiko just brought him out of this mess because his actual talent was not being realized just because he was getting stuck in this mess and fujiko, fujiko just like you know took him out of here and uh, like you know he she brought him to the the other like you know agency or whatever and uh, <laughs> when when she was uh, like you know when luca was like oh where's fujiko the lady's like oh yeah she'll be here well, obviously the lady knows that fujiko's never coming back she was just here for the money and 
There you go. And then Lupin comes in and he's like, so all of this was for just selling him to another circus troop, right? And uh, here, Lupin asks her something. Just tell me one thing before you go. Did you take that kid or save him? Like, take that kid, that would mean like just used him for money or save him. Like genuinely, she wanted to help him out. And here Fujiko says that, I think she says something like, which would you prefer? Yeah, there you go. And Rupan, <laughs> Rupan smiles and yeah, now this is another scene which I feel like has a bigger implication. We see Rupan being very serious over here for like, you know, for a moment. And uh, I don't know, I feel like this here shows how he genuinely wanted to know if Fujiko just took advantage of that kid for money or she genuinely did that to save him. I don't know, I feel like if like, you know, Rupan wanted to believe that Fujiko helped him out genuinely, like using a kid like this just for his own, her own profit and gain, you know, kind of playing with his feelings and everything. I, I don't know, I feel like Rupan would have been probably disappointed if that was really the case at Fujiko because like you know whatever you say all the characters here you know like uh, Lupin, Fujiko, Zenigata, Jigen they have like a mutual respect for each other and I feel like that would have probably been broken if like you know that's why Lupin was really serious at this moment when he asked this question and that's why Fujiko said like which one do you prefer and Lupin probably realized like yeah what am I saying? Like, you know, if she wanted to just use him for money, she could have done this in a multiple other different way, you know. But this is how she did it. That definitely means that at some extent she did want to save him. And uh, that's where it ends. Wow, that was a long discussion. Okay, I'll stop now. That was a good episode. Like, you know, all Fujiko episodes, it, I feel like every Fujiko episode is really complicated and I need to, need to think about so many things and you know like just look at it in a very broad manner otherwise <laughs> yeah it's uh, otherwise uh, most of the things you won't be able to properly realize anyways that's it thanks for watching uh no sorry <laughs> i was going to end this video <laughs> okay episode number um wait six yeah episode number six let's start i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync into whichever is your preference let's get started okay here's the countdown Three, two, one, go. Hmm. What the? Who, who's this girl? Kind of looks like Rebecca. Elena. Hmm. Is she related to Rebecca? Their hair color is very similar. What the? Ah! Up! Zenigata is here. What is happening? <laughs> wow. By the next night. <laughs> oh no. Great. Wow. I wonder what. Okay.
Hmm. Okay, let's see. Until the full moon passes. Okay. Roberto. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. That's why Rupan is. Oh, really? Two things. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. And catch Rupan. Okay, what? They're in a helicopter? Whoa, that's in a very secluded... Okay. Damn. But, I don't know, I feel like... There won't be any security here. Like, how can we even? <laughs> Maybe Rupan's hiding somewhere here, you know? Rupan has his sources. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, no. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, no, not that, but their age. I guess. Uh. Oh my god. Oh, great. Oh, God. Damn. Media Mogul. Damn. Yeah, it runs away. Hmm. Damn. Okay. Hmm.
Wait, what? <laughs> Chicken! Great! Wow! Then you got that. You, you need to. Like, all the time trying to find Rupan, you know? You need to do something else as well. <laughs> oh my god, here we go. What? Waiting in front of the phone. Oh, okay, okay. No, 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 I don't think... Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Wait. What's happening? Is that... Is that really Zenigata or... No, that must be Zenigata. For a moment I thought maybe that's Rupan in disguise. Oh my god! Damn. Ah! Okay. Oh. Ah! Oh no, that's not, that is, okay. The actual Zenigata. Oh my god! <laughs> wait, 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 what's happening? Was that her from the beginning or no? Wait, what? I was not, okay. Oh shit! My god. <laughs> oh no. Why is she? No, you're not. Oh my god. Oh, he already did it. He realized that was Fujiko from the... Oh my god. Wait, what? <laughs> what the hell? First aid kit? Ah! Oh. Okay. Oh well, you missed. Yeah. You messed up, Fujiko. Oh my god. Yo, you're gonna die. Wow. <laughs> this one's mine. The parachute. Oh my god, what a mess. Oh, this is that guy. The, the one de detective or whatever. Jeez, guys. Oh, great. 
Oh my god. Yo, what's what's in the the hand? What the? Are you? <laughs> yeah. Know your place, trash. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the original one. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Ah, I knew it was something like that. Oh my god. Ah, that's that's why I said why. What is this? Yeah. Right. What a piece of trash. I thought he would have left to a father. Was deceived by one of his enemies in the first time. Oh! Oh, that's... Oh my god. More people don't believe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's how, yeah, that's how he could, they could actually. Okay. Well, this is Rupan. He has a lot of uh, different ways to do it. Yeah, just say that. <laughs> He's already here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I wonder what's in the bag. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's, it's it's the same every time that happens. Don't worry. <laughs> then you're just used to it. <laughs> oh my god, I still feel like there's something not adding up. I'm I'm getting this weird feeling from the Oh my god. God damn. Great, so...
Oh my god, I feel like Rupan. <coughs> oh no. Whoa! Oh god, that's a. Oh my god. That's a lot of gold. <laughs> what? Yeah, Rupan's going to come and. I, I feel like he's going to come. Okay, there you go. Already here. I don't think she was able to fall, uh, make. I feel like Zenigata didn't buy her lie as well. There you go. Okay. And you know what? Not worth it. Let's get out. <laughs> oh my god. It's gone. <laughs> because of the notice. <laughs> yeah, you need to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, okay, okay. Exactly. Damn. Uh. Hmm. Entering politics for power to... Ah. Okay, will he... Will she tell? Oh yeah, that's the story that we're going with, so... <laughs> okay all right that was a very interesting episode with so many things so many you know like tricks and deceivings and you know like we feel like this is how it's going but it's not going that way <laughs> all right like There was like multiple layers to this episode. Hmm. All right, that is the end. As I said, this is another interesting episode. Wow, these, both these episodes were really interesting in its own way. The first one was about Fujiko. This one is about Zenigata and the whole thing. 
and uh, this episode has so many layers to it like it's like just <coughs> so full of you know this like you know like one, the, one person is receiving one person then the other thing and like you know it, it's like a complicated mess so first of all we get to see this g lady what's her name elena elena okay elena and uh, she you know like she is all alone in this huge mansion and uh, rupan has come to get her or her treasure and obviously where there's rupan there's zenigata zenigata comes in by the night of the next full moon rupan is going to come and take everything that elena has so now here's the thing um okay so wait a minute i wonder when the whole um Thing happened like from when was Fujiko disguising as Elena I'm trying to figure it out here like like Rupan comes in and says oh I'm gonna get you Zenigata comes in Zenigata's like Rupan you're under arrest Rupan is like oh Fox is here I'll come back later bye bye he leaves from there that point onwards Zenigata was with Elena or Fujiko in disguise. So that means that was Fujiko from the beginning, wasn't it? So I wonder how they were able to pull that off. I don't understand. Like from when did was it Elena and where was it Fujiko? Anyways, but you know, from that point onwards, Zenigata's like, "All right, we're we're going to protect you and uh, come with me." And he takes Elena and is in the car, you know, going. Now, one thing <coughs> I have to say is, I'm 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 kind of seeing that now. Just a second. No, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. I was thinking, like, she was smoking in the car. I was thinking, was that, like, a mistake? Like, but then I realized, like, Fujiko said something like, I learned each and every mannerisms of Elena. And I was recreating it perfectly. So I'm guessing that was also part of her act. Okay, never mind. Um, I was thinking of something else. Anyways, um, so the, the story here is, as Zenigata says, like, the kind of her husband i think roberto grotti i think that was his name he was like a media mogul and he like kind of has a vast fortune unfortunately he died because of a disease and uh, there was rumors that elena knows about the hidden fortune where it is and elena's like no it was like you know it's it's, it's not like there's no fortune the fortune doesn't exist and uh, like so Zenigata's like, all right, and it's okay, but Rupan thinks there's a fortune, and when Rupan has put her eyes on you, she, he's definitely going to come. So let us go to a place where, you know, like everything will be. Um, I mean, you, you'll be safe. And uh, they take him, not they, sorry, she takes him to the, the mansion in the, in, the, in, in the, like, you know, the, the mountains or whatever. Like, I'm kind of finding this whole thing so funny because this was Fujiko all along. So, <laughs> the whole thing of when Zenigata asks, like, oh, are you sure you are, this is the first time you've come here? She's like, yeah, this is the first time with, uh, like, you know, after my husband died that I've come here. You know, like, and no one has come here before. Like, it was so hilarious because <laughs> this was actually Fujiko in disguise. And, oh my god. Like, <laughs> anyways, um, Kind of okay. One thing. Okay, the pictures we can see from where she has started, like you know, wearing full sleeves. You know, like when she was, uh, like you know, when she was in the slums, half sleeves. Or uh, even after that, you know, uh, in the next picture where there's like you know she's sitting down, half sleeves again. 
I'm guessing after that she kind of betray his him, uh, the guy. And from here onwards, she started wearing full sleeves. Yep, full sleeves all the time. Roberto and her. So she talks about the past of uh, where she was born in the slum, and you know how she was exploited by like you know men, and that's why like you know she has this like you know hatred for men. And uh, there was once a time when there was like someone who was trying to like, you know, like force her. And uh, that's when Roberto came in and he threatened them and, you know, like saved him, her. And she said, like, he said, like, I saw a crying woman before me. Is that not a reason enough to save her? And uh, like... Here's one thing, um, obviously this is Fujiko, I, I know that. I wonder if Fujiko realized, I think Fujiko probably realized that this whole story was a lie in itself. Like, you know, like, because she was being abused by him. You know, I'm, I'm, I think Fujiko knew about this. But, you know, like, the thing here is, obviously when I was watching this, I did not know that that was Fujiko. But I still felt that that whole scene was really weird, you know, because the way Zenigata was looking at her, you know, uh, the way he was scowling at her and the way she was crying, you know, there was like a close up on her lips and there was like, like her tears falling down. I was like, what the hell is happening here? Why are they like, you know, like showing it in this manner? It feels weird. Something is wrong here. Like, this is where I kind of felt that. But obviously, I did not realize that was Fujiko at that moment. So... <laughs> she's like, cook food for me. <laughs> and Zenigata, like, you know, cooks, starts cooking, like, cuts her ha his hand. And uh, here is where Zenigata feels the whole situation extremely weird. That... How she was able to know the... Like, uh, like where the first aid box was but she's not come here before we see after that Zenigata at night like this so episode was so filled of like you know like you know layers it was, it was like layers upon layers of deceive like you know like deceiving us as like us audience um Zenigata is just standing there and Fujiko comes in uh, or Elena comes in and uh he was, he all, that means uh, before this Zenyatta already called the headquarters and he said that something's probably wrong. Go to the, like, you know, like the, the mansion and find out if the original Anela is in there. And, you know, he, he put it down and that's when Fujiko comes down. <laughs> like, I was so confused here, you know, like, oh my God. I was like, why is Zenyatta chasing her and why is she even running away? <laughs> I was like, what's happening here? Like, you know, what is going on? Now I, like, and obviously now I understand why she was running away. Would you go realize that, okay, something is wrong. And Zenigata also realized that, yeah, this is definitely someone else. This is not Elena. <laughs> so both of them, like, and she starts running and Zenigata starts catch, trying to catch him, her. And uh, here Fujiko kind of slips and was almost going to fall. And Zenigata tries to save her. But obviously Rupan was already there and Fujiko falls, Rupan comes and grabs her and uh, oh my god I got such a big surprise when she took off the disguise. I'm like what the hell like and I was not expecting Fujiko to be there. But Fujiko being there answered all the questions. Why they were acting so weird? You know? Why Zenigata suddenly started to chase her and why suddenly Elena started running away? Because that was Fujiko and Zenigata was sure about that. <laughs> So we get to see like you know what happened before in like you know, two hours ago in the mansion while Fujiko was like deceiving Zenigata, Rupan and uh, Jigen was already there and asking for like you know the the hidden fortune and uh, here like you know I kind of I, I think I said this when I was reacting as well I was like why is she doing this you know it's like a weird thing that she's doing and uh, which uh, which is which answer we get in like you know after the like in the future after there. But at that moment, we see the, 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 the detective, that detective guy, you know, come in and 
arrest try to arrest Lupan Lupan runs away and uh, <laughs> and uh, Lupan is also like oh my god that means somehow Zengato was able to figure out that you are it's, you, it's Fujiko it's not you uh, it's not Elena and we get to know how he was able to get to understand that and uh, <laughs> the helicopter crashes <laughs> that was funny anyways um now back into the in the mansion we see elena there and this detective again like you know it's like oh i want the money give me the money and like you know points the gun at her and this is the reason why she's so like you know she, she doesn't trust men like like if this is what happened throughout her life like you know who can blame her for her like you know for her not trusting men like like look at this this specimen being this detective what a beautiful like oh my god yeah that's why and he, he's like oh give me the money but points the gun at her and zenigata comes in <laughs> this detective was trying to act smart he's like oh i'm not rupan i'm going to i'm going to shoot and zenigata's like yeah damn right you're not rupan like rupan's like not <laughs> like, you're not a small timer like you like you know like know your place and he gets he gets arrested now again from here on was the whole deceiving start like you know like that's like layers upon layers of betrayal and deceive well like first of all zenigata is like all right like you know, we're going i'm going to like you know protect you this from here onwards and he talks about you know like the sleeve and this is where i was like all right so i was correct something was going on with the like you know with with roberto and her because you know the the way she was acting was really weird in a way you know like she's talking about how she doesn't uh, like you know believe in men doesn't trust in men but at the same time she was married to someone and i was like something must be going on and there you go you know like um that was like a like a like a like a injury a wound and she talks about what happened and she's like i like you know she she's like i i doubt she he left me some fast fortune because he didn't like me she hated me and she talks about how just one time he he betrayed she betrayed him i was deceived by one of the enemies digging for a digging for a scandal and uh, you know like that's when roberto came in but he never forgave me for one discretion and from there onwards you know like not only she started abusing her but at the same time even during after his death he he did something that would probably ruin her life forever which was he said that i've you know like, you know, like I've, i have a hidden fortune and i told it to like you know, i told the actual where it is to my wife and uh, that's how he was going to destroy her life even after his death now, now that I think about it, uh, I don't know how much this was the truth because she did know the where the hidden fortune was. So, no, no, you know what? Okay, okay. Um, oh, all right. So, yeah, it is true. I think he really, like, you know, Roberto really wanted to ruin her life, you know, by, like, you know just giving this out in the media that i have a hidden fortune and i've told my wife where it is after he's going to die everyone's going to try to get it and he was like ah that's what you get for messing with me that was his plan even after that he wanted to ruin her life but the thing that was he was not expecting was elena already knew where the treasure was the fortune was that was one thing that she was not expecting but the thing here is even though she knew where the treasure was the fact was that everyone was trying to get her, you know, to get her their hands on the fortune. So the problem was still persisting, you know, that was the whole situation. She knew where this fortune was, but the problem here was she was not like, you know, everyone was like, you know, messing with her from here onwards. So she was sick and tired of that whole thing. That's why this whole play, so that he, she could somehow get out of this mess. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, like, that's what she says. And she's like, um yeah that's how he ruined my life and she also says like oh like you know, look at caesar and lupin they also want my money that's why they're here like you know men will be men and they'll always be like and you know, obviously because of a distrust 
and uh, <clears throat> I've been cursed by a curse that will follow me for the rest of my life. And she's like, what am I supposed to do? And uh, here Zenigata kind of plays along and like, you know, asks Rupan for help. The whole thing is so funny, you know, like, I love how Zenigata <laughs> randomly asks Rupan for his cooperation and help. And in one of the previous episodes as well, you know, like, and he just agrees to help him out. <laughs> Like, you know, like, like, who would believe that they're actually, like, you know, actually, like, you know, Zenigata's trying to catch Rupan because he's a thief. <laughs> it's just like a friend. He's like, oh, hello, Rupan, I need your help. Like, you, can you do this? And Rupan's like, all right, I have enough time to do that. <laughs> but obviously in this episode, at least, you know, like, Rupan had a motive for actually playing along. But I've seen multiple episodes previously where Rupan really helps him out. Just from the good of his heart. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of... It's funny. Oh, anyways, um, Zenigata like kind of do, does the whole play of Rupan is like, oh, I got my hand on the fortune, and he runs away. So everyone knows, the whole world knows that the fortune is gone. No one's going to mess with her. Elena's plan has been fulfilled. That was her plan, you know, to get out of this messy situation so that the world thinks that she doesn't have the money. After that, she's going to use the money and, you know, like, but, you know, like, here, again, at this, at that moment, we did not know that Elena knew about the treasure, the hidden location. So, after that scene, Zenigata's like, alright, like, you know, you won't have any problem from here onwards. And he's like, maybe Rupan had a change of heart, that's why he helped, you know, you out. But Zenigata knew something is wrong because Rupan doesn't help from the good of his heart most of the times. Uh, sometimes he does. So there must be something going on. And as Zenigata says, whenever there's Rupan, there's a treasure. You know, like, like Rupan's like a metal detector. Like, <laughs> since Rupan is here, that would mean that like, he had done his research. And that would mean there's definitely a treasure here. So that would mean that the lady here, Elena, is telling a lie. So basically what Zenigata did is he trusted in Rupan's instinct more than the person herself. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. So, oh. And here again, I was feeling really weird because the way they were like, you know, showing it, you know, like they were like giving like close up and zoom ins in Zenigata and the way, like, you know, their expressions and everything and Zenigata just leaves and the way, uh, you know, Elena was kind of smirking. I was like, oh my god, something is going on here. Like, you know, it's not over, you know, there's another layer underneath all of this. And there you go. Elena actually knew where the fortune was. And you know what the uh, sad, not sad, but what, what the weird, not weird, but I, you could say sad thing here is that the, the secret of the fortune was actually inside the, the photo, photograph where Elena and Roberto met for the first time, you know, in the slums. Which kind of, I don't know, it has a deeper meaning to it, but if you have to think of a deeper meaning behind it, it would mean that that was probably the happiest time of Roberto and Elena's life. And he probably looked at that time fondly as well. That's why he put the secret in that photo frame, in that particular photo frame, in that picture. Because that was the time when I, I feel like they genuinely loved each other. And after that, we saw what happened, you know. Like she betrayed him and he wasn't able to accept that and he started abusing her and the whole thing went crashing down so yeah that was the time you know where they both of them probably roberto and both uh, elena as well liked each other and that was the better times and that's why the secret of the fortune was actually in that photo frame i don't know maybe i'm looking too much into it but this is like a probable explanation And, uh, you know, Elena goes in, opens the bookcase and sees the gold. And she's like, oh, oh my, God. here we go. You know, now there's no one will actually try to get my gold. I'll be able to, like, you know, take this with me and use this on my own. And obviously, Rupan was there. Rupan came in. Rupan is like, aha, got you. And Jigen also, uh, uh, not Jigen, sorry, Zenigata also comes in. Because Zenigata knew that Zenigata trusted in Rupan and Rupan's sense of treasure detection. So he trusted in Rupan, that's why she, he came. He was like, yep, something must be going on here. So they confronted each other and here Rupan kind of says that, 
you know, like you think you'll be able to outpace uh, Jigen, you know, the Jigen, this Jigen we're talking about, he can shoot you many times. And Zenigata was like, you know, just tearing them down. Then Rupan looks at the moon and he's like, all right, fine, you know, let's go. Like, I'll, I'll just leave it this time. And it was funny, you know, like, because the reason why he actually left <laughs> because, because he said in his notice that <laughs> he would come and before, like, you know, like the, the time, the time given was actually just past, I think. Yeah, like, you know, this full moon. What is that? Just a sec. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's funny. He said that I'm going to steal it underneath the full moon, and the whole sky was clouded at that moment. So he was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> he left because of that. He left, <laughs> and obviously because of his respect for Zenigata as well. I think at a certain extent, but Zenigata was not going to move from there. So Lupin was like, "All right, maybe I need to actually." Go. Yeah, that's what that's definitely what happened. He he thought that all right, so somehow I need to get out of here because I don't want to like you know confront Zenigata here because Zenigata is very serious about this. So he kind of sees behind him and he sees that the moon is being covered by the clouds and he's like, Alright, good excuse, I guess. And he just leaves and he says, like, oh, because of the moon. Like you know, I said in my wrote a uh, note that I'll steal only when the full moon night is over, before it's over. So that's why. <laughs> Oh my god, these guys. And that's when, um, you know, like, Zenigata is, uh, Elena's like, why did you trust me? And he says, like, you know, I trusted in Rupan. You know, Rupan's, where, is, where there's Rupan, there's treasure. And uh, he's like, my work is done. And he says the same thing that his husband said once, that if there's, like, a person crying, or a woman crying in front of me, I'll, I'll have to save him. And uh, Elena, later on, Elena was like, yeah, now I'm going to use this for the women, the children, you know, like all the people who are suffering, and this is what I'm going to use. And everyone's like, oh, so, you know, like, like uh, you, people are going to target you from here onwards. Like, you know, what, what are you going to do with this dirty money? And uh, he's like, don't, like, you know, don't say that this is dirty money. Um... Now, interesting thing here, he says that this is that money that, just a sec, that is money a certain man protected for me with his honor and his life. Anyone who calls it dirty money has to answer to me. Now, I feel like this has like a double meaning because one like there was a time when she really respected her husband i feel like he's she's talking both about zenigata and her husband at the same time and i don't know this is just what i feel because technically this is her husband's money but at the same time it is the money that zenigata protected so and like you know she respected both zenigata respects zenigata and respected his husband once before and that's why she's like yeah he don't talk bad about this money and when like you know like when they're like why are you doing this why are you putting your own life online and she's like there's women who like you know like are crying in front of me like this. there are women crying before me isn't that reason enough and that's where it ends a really good episode as i said this episode had layers on top of on one and each one on another and uh, yeah, that was interesting. So that's it. Thanks for watching. This is my reaction to Rupan the Third, Part Four, Episode Number Five and Six. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Rupan the Third, Part Four. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.